What's the difference between a legal basement suite and an illegal basement suite? So if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you're either an investor or someone that is gonna have family living in the basement. So if that fits you, then continue watching this video. And if you are just curious about what the difference is, then I mean, that's kind of weird, but <laughs> you're also welcome to stay along. So uh, with no further ado, let's get right into the video. My name is Zach Schultz. I am part of the Live Inner City real estate team here in Calgary, Alberta. And yeah, I just wanted to say that. So now let's get right into the video. So there's four primary things that separate a legal basement suite versus an illegal basement suite. The first one being egress windows. Each bedroom has to have a window that can be fully opened and used to escape. So this is basically the city just saying, in case of an emergency such as a fire, they want people to be able to get out. So there's a few more things about the window, so let's just dive right in. So you must be able to open the window without using a key or a tool. Because, I mean, think about it. If the basement's on fire and you need to get out quickly, you're not going to want to have to uh, fiddle, <laughs> fiddle with the key uh, to get out. So basically, make sure it's as easy as possible to get out. Number two. The window must have an unobstructed opening of 3.8 feet squared in area and no dimension less than 380 millimeters. So basically the point of this is to make sure people can actually fit through the window. It's one thing to be able to open the window, but if you get stuck, then it's not going to be much help. You may as well have just stayed inside the house and burned. That's pretty morbid, that's pretty morbid, but that's, that's the thinking behind it. You need to be able to fit through the window. Number three. So an existing window well, which is those metal things that go around the window, I'll put a picture here so you know what I'm talking about, uh, must provide a minimum clearance of 550 millimeters or 21.5 inches uh, in front of the window. This is basically making sure that the person has enough room to get out. And if you're adding a new window or window well, you're actually gonna need more space. So you're gonna actually have to have 760 millimeters or 30 inches in front of the window. Also, if a casement type window is used, it must open the full 90 degrees because if it opens not 90 degrees, then you can easily get stuck. So as we can see, the theme for egress windows is you need to be able to get out of the home. That's pretty much all it comes down to uh, for egress windows on a super high level. Number two, smoke and fire protection. The building code requires the installation of a smoke tight separation between the primary residence and the basement suite. So what does this mean? Number one, so installing a minimum of 12.7 millimeter or half centimeter thick drywall on the ceiling and on both sides of the wall studs uh, that separate the suite from the main residence. So all drywall joints must be taped and filled with drywall compound to basically make a smoke tight joint. So you also need to be installing the 12.7 millimeter or half centimeter thick drywall in the mechanical room for the studs and stuff. All again, it's the exact same, except in the mechanical room. The only difference is that you have the option of having automatic sprinklers instead. So you get to choose, but only for the mechanical room. For the rest of the basement, you still need the, the drywall. So here's a picture of an illegal basement suite. And here's a picture of a legal basement suite. Do you guys see the difference? Good. Now on to the next. So the next one is needing smoke alarms in each bedroom, common area, everywhere, uh, basically to make sure that everyone knows if there's a fire. And the second part of this is making sure that they're actually connected because it won't do you much good if you have the smoke alarm there, but then there's no batteries in it. So basically that's the requirements. Uh, very simplified. There's also the carbon noxide alarms, which should be centrally located in the upstairs suite, the basement suite, and the mechanical room. And just like the last ones, they also need to be connected. So uh, what the wording they have on the Calgary guidelines is they need to be permanently wired to the electrical panel. Number three, and probably my favorite, why? I don't even know. I just think it's interesting, uh, but it's basically exterior stairways and the protection of secondary suite exits. So if the people in the secondary suite are exiting, there's one hazard that not a lot of people think about, I didn't think about it, which is if there's 
glass or a door or something above with glass, well, you know, stuff happens, the glass can explode and glass can shatter everywhere. And if that glass shatters where the exits are for that person, they're gonna have to walk through glass, which does not sound very delightful, does it? So there's two things that you can do. Well, I guess there's like four things that you can do, but two main ones that I like to talk about. First is getting wired glass. So if you don't know what this is, wired glass is basically this glass that is super resistant to like shattering and exploding everywhere. So this is used in like elementary schools, office buildings, government buildings, stuff like that. It's very cool. Uh, there's also glass block and you're also allowed to get other protection. You basically just want to make sure that the glass is not shattering everywhere. The second option you have if you don't want to do anything to the glass is you know, to build a roof over over the exits of the suite. So that way the glass lands on the roof rather than on the ground where the person is trying to escape. For pre-existing basement suites, the use of a single heating and ventilation system that serve both the main dwelling and the secondary suite is totally okay uh, according to the Alberta Fire Code. But if you are buying a place that doesn't have a legal basement suite and you're adding that in, it's best it's just a good idea to get separate because that way you're prepared for anything and any changes that may happen. I hope this gave you some insight into the difference between a legal and an illegal basement suite and I hope it was also entertaining for you. So question of the day, okay? This is the question of the day. If you were in your basement suite and it was burning down to the ground, what is the one thing you would grab with you while exiting the building? Drop a comment, I want to know. So anyways, if this video provided value, please hit the subscribe button and please, please, please hit the like button. YouTube loves it for the algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. And you know, if you want a video where I explain the costs of legalizing your basement suite, drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to do that. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day and take care. See you.